In this video, we'll be sharing the technical tips for successful ERIS guided gastrodigenostomy. ERIS guided gastrodigenostomy was performed in a 68 year old female with gastric outlet obstruction resulting from unresectable adenocarcinoma of the head of the pancreas. The first step in ERIS guided gastrodigenostomy is to insufflate the jejunal bowel loop to enable visualization from the gastric lumen. In this patient, an XB scope was used to traverse the malignant stricture in the second portion of the duodenum. Once the stricture was traversed, an angled guide wire was passed through the channel of the endoscope and then into the jejunum. The endoscope was then removed over the guide wire and a tandem catheter was inserted over the guide wire and passed into the jejunum. The guide wire was then removed leaving the catheter in place. Then, large volume of normal saline mixed with methylene blue and iodine contrast was instilled into the jejunum through the tandem catheter to insufflate the small bowel loop as much as possible. Although a tandem catheter was used in this patient, a nasocystic catheter is ideal as it allows installation of large volume of fluid into the jejunum. The next step involved identification of a loop of jejunum which could be targeted for apposition with the stomach. The echoendoscope was placed in the gastric body and then rotated back and forth until small bowel loops were visualized. The step was repeated until the most optimal loop of small bowel, which was located as close to the gastric wall, was visualized. Once the optimal loop of jejunum is identified, the quarter enhanced delivery catheter of the Axios luminoposin metal stent is inserted directly through the gastric wall and into the small bowel lumen. The most important factor in this step is to start applying quartery a second or two prior to pushing the delivery catheter through the gastric wall and to apply rapid and firm pressure during the step to ensure the passage of the catheter tip through both the gastric and jejunal walls. The proximal flange is deployed within the channel of the echoendoscope rather than looking for a black mark and then pushed out into the gastric lumen after deployment within the channel. Correct placement of the stent is confirmed by free flow of saline mixed with methane blue into the gastric lumen. The use of glucagon is important for this procedure to minimize peristalsis and prophylactic antibiotics are also administered. A small bowel follow-through examination showed the luminoposin metal stent in good position. The patient was able to be discharged home in two days' time on a mechanical soft diet. If you would like to observe and learn evidence-based practices and know more about state-of-the-art endoscopic and fluoroscopic technologies, please attend Florida Live Endoscopy from August 18th to 20th, 2022 in Orlando, Florida, where advanced interventions will be performed by internationally reputed faculty from around the world. Please join us at Florida Live, where the magic of endoscopy begins.